scan or text, and you'll immediately be sent an email with that information. And so what happened was is that we created the mobile site. So here you can see there was a video. Below here was an enter for your free report. Then you could choose which report you wanted. You could check, you could click one, you could click report two, or you could click both. And then once you entered in your information, the information was below here, you were automatically sent that email and attached with that particular report that you wanted. So it was a great way to get the to capture a lot of leads in a demographic when it, you wouldn't have really been able to otherwise and give them that report instantaneously. The other thing about the trade show space is that a lot of people will do the fishbowl yeah. thing, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to go take those and you have to yeah. input. Yeah. With this, it's all seamless. I go, I put this back into my constant contact, boom. I just grew my database by 50, 50 people. Like that. It's it's incredible. You also don't have to print it to hand it out. Because I'm thinking, why would you hand it? You don't have to print it. Do you have them? It goes to them digitally. And you just post it. You just post it at the show, right? You could just post it at the show if you wanted. Yeah. 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 So they captured their leads. Their database. They, they had 37 people that entered it. And they even say 37 people. That doesn't sound like a lot. But at the trade show space, Matt, the director of marketing over at Greenberg, said we had increased his leads by a thousand percent. Because we'll get into this in a little, little bit right here. I'll show you. with these campaigns is really the amount of email addresses that we're able to obtain. So you still rely on email. That's something? It's still? <laughs> yeah, email's still, yeah. still powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's say, let's take an example of, let's say a, a campaign garnered 10,000 email addresses. Okay, we'll just use that as an example. And what you need to find out is what is the lifetime value of your customer? When you get a customer, on average, how, how much do they pay you if they're your customer for life? Okay? For some people it's higher, some people it's lower. And if you take a 2% conversion rate, which is about an average of conversion rate based on the amount of email addresses that you capture of people that actually become paying customers when you're pumping those email addresses into some, some type of CRM or to some type of email marketing system. So you take a hundred dollars, just use an example of a hundred dollars. 
So let's say the average lifetime of a customer is $100, which is obviously a very conservative number. So you take that $100 and you multiply it by 200, the amount of conversions that you had. So that would be 20000 minus your cost of whatever the campaign was. And that's how you can get a return on investment and understand how, how powerful your, your campaign was or was not. It's easier to measure with this stuff, too. Oh, yeah. So, things that you need to keep in mind when you're creating a campaign, okay? You need to, you need to set the vision and the strategy. Okay, what's the incentive going to be? What's the hook? Why are they going there? Okay, that's the number one thing that you need to think about. Step two, I would say, uh, it's not on this page, but the data. You need to think about what data does it make sense for you to capture. Do you want to do a survey? You know, is this, is, this a, is this a constituency of people that you already have their information, but you want feedback from them? Or is it in, a, in an environment where you could potentially draw new customers? Okay? You want to think about your, your, your call to action here. Is it specific enough? But also, you also want to think that in some cases you might want to make it generic. Why? Because one of the really neat things about QR codes is that when they go on something like this, you can change the back end without changing the QR code itself. So you can see here that I put scanner text report for your free report to win for your, for your free Gotti code strategy session. Those are all pretty generic calls to action so that I can change the site on the back end without having to change this, which is going to save me money on printing. So you want to think about, you want to make it clear, you want to let them know why they're going there, but if it's a case where you know you're only going to print something at one time like this, then it probably makes sense to be really specific, like scan here for a $2 coupon, you know, instead of saying just scan here for a coupon, right? Powerful promotion. What are the ways that you can utilize intangibles in your environment to get people to scan? Can you have a sales associate in your store or at a trade show going out there and telling people to go make sure they scan or text in? Can you, can you, is there some type of person with an MC, you know, who's doing an event? Can they announce and draw attention to it? There, you know, there are all these types of, of important pieces that are going to draw attention to it in the frequency. How many times can you get them to do that in the event, right? And where? Where is it going to go? Is it going to go on a flyer? Is it going to go on a book? Is it going to go on a banner? Is it going to go on a business card? Is it going to go on, you know, where is it going to, is it going to go on packaging? Is it going to go on a poster? You've got to think about where is your target market, where are they going to be, and what is going to be the most powerful thing to drive them to. So that was